Hello, I'm Nora Raleigh Baskin. I'm the author of 15 novels for middle grade and young adult readers. You might take a little look. I, I have them on my windowsill back here, as well as um, many, many other books that you might be able to take a peek at, <laughs> top and bottom. Most of them you can't even see. Um, you may have heard of Anything But Typical, which was one of my um, better known books. But today I'm going to talk to you about 910, a September 11th story. 910, a September 11th story, is about four, four children. Sergio, who's an African-American boy who lives in Brooklyn, New York, which is where I was born. Amy, who is a Jewish girl who lives in Los Angeles, California. There's Nahid, who is Muslim and of Iranian descent, living in Columbus, Ohio. And there's Will, who lives in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. He's um, white and he's a boy. I chose four characters as different as I could make them in four characters. I thought any more characters than that would be too much for a reader to follow. Certainly too much for, for me as a writer to keep track of. Um, I wanted to make them as different as I could to show how similar they are, how similar we really are, and how the attacks of 9-11 affected everyone across the entire country, from California to New York, rural to urban, black to white, uh, boy to girl, Jewish Muslim to Christian. So that was why I chose to tell this story in four characters. Each character also reflects something I wanted to say about the events of 9-11. So each character has their own story within the story. They meet two days before 9-11 in an airport, except they don't ever really meet. It's more like a baton passing from one character to the next without any of them ever meeting each other, which was also done intentionally just to show you how, how close we come to each other without ever knowing it, how, how much our lives intersect. So it was a literary device in order to do that. And then they come together at the end and actually meet each other. So I don't think it's a spoiler alert because everyone knows how the end of this story, um, how the story ends. And the trick was to write a book that is still engaging and still has drive, even though everybody knows what's gonna happen on September 11th, 2001. So, the four themes that I was felt very strongly about, one was bravery um, of the first responders. You can't write a story about that takes place on the day of 9-11 or the days leading up to 9-11 without speaking to the bravery of the men and women, the first responders who ran towards danger while people were trying to escape. So Sergio, the boy in Brooklyn, befriends um, a first responder 24 hours before 9-11. So his story spoke to that unique and amazing bravery. Um, Amy's story, the girl in California, her mother is in New York and is about to go to a meeting at the World Trade Center that very morning, but doesn't because she takes a phone call from her mother. Okay, that was a spoiler alert. <laughs> um, Another spoiler alert perhaps is that no one loses anyone in this book. It was important for me to tell a story about the ways people were affected that that wasn't just about losing somebody. It wasn't just about the terrible number of deaths that occurred that day. So Amy's story tells about second chances, about near misses, and most importantly, what do we do with our life when we recognize how precious it is, how how fleeting and important it is and making the most of that, which is what Amy needs to learn from her story. Um, heroism, I differentiate from bravery, is Will's story, the boy in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, the 
place where the fourth plane, Flight 93, crash landed, crashed, didn't land, um, because the passengers on that flight knew what was going to happen and prevented that plane from hitting its target, which was the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Consequently, they all lost their lives. And Will needs to understand um, and learn and accept the death of his father, who also acted bravely, acted as a hero before, the, before his story begins. And Nahid, the girl in Columbus, Ohio, is Muslim and she experiences Islamophobia before the events of 9-11 and then certainly after 9-11. Yet at the same time, by the end of the book, you realize we can come together and be stronger in many of the ways this year has been for you guys who weren't born when the events of 9-11 happened, but you've been living through a year of the pandemic and that it has been traumatic in many ways for students and for teachers and for parents. And yet we'll get through it. You'll get through it. Just like we got through the events of 9-11, stronger, wiser, the world changed. That's what this book is about. It's about the before and after this day. And I will just read you now the very first page of this novel. Everyone will mention the same thing, and if they don't, when you ask them, they will remember it was a perfect day. More than 8 million people lived in New York City that year, so of course, not everyone's day started perfectly. There was excitement and pain, anxiety and boredom, love and loneliness, anger and joy, but everyone who looked up that morning must have marveled. What a perfect day. The sky was robin's egg blue. There were one or two fluffy, almost decorative clouds. It was late summer warm, so the air was still and clear, not the least bit humid. Warm, the exact way you would set the temperature of the earth if you could. Clear with just enough breeze so you knew you were outside breathing fresh air. People would remember that day with all sorts of adjectives, serene, lovely, cheerful, invigorating, peaceful, quiet, astounding, crystalline, blue, perfect. Until 8.46 a.m. when the first plane struck the North Tower of the World Trade Center and nothing would ever be the same again. But that has not happened yet. 9.10, a September 11th story. I hope that it evokes discussions and questions. I hope people talk about where they were that day and share that with their children. Because what I've learned over this past five years since writing this book is that kids wanna know. They need to understand the truth, they need to hear the facts, and they need to be able to talk about it, the adults who remember that day. And I think the adults also, in particular teachers, need to remember that day and the heroes that they were when Instead of running home to take care of their own children, they had to stay in school. Heroes um, come in many forms. Bravery takes many forms. And that day, as in this last year, teachers have shown us what that really means. So thank you for taking care of my kids that day. Thank you. Thank you.